All right, so here are the bundles of hair that I used. I have five bundles here, but I didn't even use five bundles. I used three bundles and like a half of the fourth bundle, and then I used my Dove Argan Oil Infused Shampoo to wash. So here's my closure that I got from eBay, and I'll put the link of where I, um, the link of the, the eBay seller where I bought the um, closure from, but this closure is superb quality, the best closure quality I've ever used or experienced before. And um, it was relatively inexpensive. So as I said, I'll have the link down below. So I just took the cap. And this is the cap I got from the beauty supply store. And this cap is so good. It fits snug on my head. And it's like a good cross between a dome cap and a mesh cap. So I just put the, my cap on um, where um, on my, my mannequin head and try to find out where I want um, my deep part to be. So I just took my closure and just measured exactly where I want my closure to land. And then um, I just took like, um, like a red lip liner pencil and I just marked where the middle part is onto the cap. So I can just have it as a guide for when I'm sewing down my closure and stuff. And as I said, I'm doing like a deep side part with a lot of volume in the front. So here I'm just taking like my lip liner and just making that line of where I want the middle part from the closure to be at so I can keep it in the right place. Yeah, but this closure, I'm not closure, the cap that I use is so good. So here I um, sewed down my closure. And um, it's like, it's not going to be at the center, but I just put it like that so I could sew it better and stuff but sewed it down and I cut a little bit of the lace in front but I will, I'll cut the rest of it off later and then to do um, my special effect to give a lot of volume in the front I just squared off a section in the front and I'll show you guys how like what I plan to do later but this is a section where I'll lay the hair on um, the weft's diagonal so that I can or not or like vertical going up going up and down so I can give a lot of volume in the front without having to worry about like bumping it with like a curling thing or whatever. So I'll show you how I do this a little bit later. So I've sewed on all the all the bundles, three bundles. I've sewed down, no, two bundles. I've sewn down. So I have one more bundle to go before I start doing um, my bump in the front. But um, my these the, the, um this uh what do you call it? these bundles have beards on them. So the beards show anytime I do the flip over method because I didn't cut any wefts. Um, so far so I just cut those beards off and it was really easy to cut off and then um, yeah so I have one more bundle to go and that will fill in this space in the middle and then then the fourth bundle is what, I, what is what I'm going to use um, to do the thing in the front so now I have all the bundles that I've used so this is three bundles and then I'll be starting the fourth bundle and this is a space that I have left off to do my Tara Monet, because that's where I got it from, volume bump in the front thing. So I just measure um, the space with the track that I need and then cut it. And this is the only time where I've cut the wefts now. And I'll be cutting wefts from here on out. So just took um, the weft and then measured it and then cut it where I want it to be cut. And then um, this is like the, the, most, the longest part because you have to lay the tracks down so close to each other. So I've already sewed on the first track, and then this is me sewing on the second track. So when I sew on the second track, I catch the previous track in my needle so I can sew them together. And this is what gives that volume in the front. And um, so after you finish like sewing all the stuff down, and when you flip the hair back over, it stands up on its own. And what gives it the ability to stand up is you sewing the track on both sides. And I'll show a clip of how Tara Monet did it. And I'll put a link down below of the whole video of how she did it. But this is where I learned it from. And this is what she does to give that big volume in the front when you do like a deep side bang and stuff. So it's it's not hard, but the tedious part is just doing it close to each other. So it takes a lot of tracks to fill in the front. So now my wig is complete. And you can see in the front how I have that volume up there and this is exactly how I wanted it to look. It's the volume and it's just standing on its own. And then I didn't show how I cut 
the mesh cap, the mesh cap under the closure to expose it, and then I put a flesh colored stocking um, under the closure so it can help with um, you know making it more natural and stuff like that. But um, I forgot to show that part. Sorry about that, but I hope you guys understand, and I feel like you should. So now I'm just taking on the hair, and then um, I sewed down the one side, the shorter side. I forgot to film that part, but I sew down my wigs like just in the front. I don't sew the sides or the back. I just sew the front down just to keep it secure. And this cap is a very nice cap, so even just having it on my head, if I want to take it off every day, this is a good cap, and it's really tight, and it's good. But I need to sew my wigs down because it makes me feel better. So I've already sewed the first part down. The other, the other side, so I'm, this is the other side I'm sewing down. So I just part the hair where I feel my hair braided underneath, and that's where I'll um, start stitching. And I only put on the one side, I put like three stitches. On this side, I'll probably put like four or five stitches. And I just put um, that's just enough just to keep it secure and on my head. But as I said, I just part the hair and then I find where my braid is underneath and then just start sewing. And um, I didn't even I, forget, I didn't even think of um, like sewing like my braiding pattern, but it's not even like it's good because I can't braid like that well. So I it would have been an, an an atrocious sight if you guys saw <laughs> my braiding pattern underneath. But I just did enough to have two braids going from um, from down each side of the part of the closure, so I can sew it down. And I'm actually natural. I haven't even like talked about my hair in a while and stuff like that, but um, from November 2012 to May 2013, I didn't have a laxer and I grew my hair out. Um, and then I, yeah, within this year, March 2014, I cut off all my uh, my relaxed ends. So that's when I've officially been natural. And um, my hair has been growing really fast and I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing. As I said before in many videos before, like, I don't know exactly my plans for my hair and stuff, but for now, it'll just be under my units or braided up and just under there growing and I'll give, it give me more time to figure out, you know, what exactly I'm going to do. But back to my sewing down my wig to my hair. I think I just finished. Yeah, I'm done now. I did, like, I don't even count how many stitches I did, but... I did something, and it's secure. So, um, I think that's all for, like, the actual wig making and then sewing it down. And, um, this is the method I've been using for a while now. I just sew my wig down in the front. I don't do the sides, I don't do the back. It's just enough just to keep it on my head and, you know, make it really secure. And then I didn't even like sew like right there in, in, the, in my forehead area because it wasn't necessary. So now let's move on to getting the closure to look a little more natural. So the closure came as a straight back part. And I like to make it like a curved part to make it look a little more natural. So I kind of take some hair from one side and bring it to the other side. And the one thing about doing that is that you can still see the straight part underneath that hair you brought to the side so what I did was I took like a black eyeliner pencil and filled in that part that the closure came with to darken it up on like under it because you could still see the line going straight back so I just took my eyeliner and uh, fill in that space and I think I showed that didn't I show yeah so I did that and then after um, I filled in that space I took my curling wand and put it down there like put it on the part so I can like help train the hair to lay exactly how I want it and for it to stay like that and the curling wand is the only tool I have that gets super hot so this is like the easiest and fastest way to like tame your hair and your parts and stuff like that and then after that I took my MAC um, prolonged wear concealer and I just um, filled in the space because um, I don't I didn't bleach knots or anything like that so I just put concealer on there and this is the only time I ever put concealer because that because when I make my my units I just put concealer and I put eyeshadow on top of it and it stays on there I don't need to keep doing it every time I like every day and stuff like that unless like I wash my hair many times and it starts to fade and I just reapply it but this is just good enough so I just did it just to make it closer to my skin tone 
And then there's other parts that need to be like laid down. Like you kind of kind of see in the crown of my head how it's kind of like bumped up. I just take my um, my curling wand and I just um, lay it on there for a couple seconds to tame it. And then um, that's how it is. And just keep playing. And I just, I'm just keep playing with it until I can get it exactly how I want and stuff like that. But this is how I make my, my units. And if you have any other questions or anything, you can just... Um, ask me down below for like what supplies I use and all that stuff but I have a picture on Instagram and I'll share it here with you guys of the final final after like I got myself looking decent because I was uh, rough doing my hair but um yeah all information from the video will be down below see you next time bye um, not fluently but I can speak once and see however I understand everything completely Fun, Janine. I'm not, no. All right, say something.